bunny. Now it is time to bow and sing the bunny song. He said. The music started and everyone bowed. Then Mr. Lunt noticed something. Hey, boss, those three guys don't look like they're bowing. He said. Mr. Nezzer took a closer look. It was Rack, Shack, and Benny. I said, it's time to sing the bunny song. He repeated. Rack, Shack, and Benny did not sing. Their friend Laura was shocked. Come on, guys. She begged. Sing the song. Rack, Shack, and Benny did not sing. Mr. Nezzer shouted again. Sing the song. Finally, Shack started singing. But he wasn't singing the bunny song. No, he was singing the song his mother taught him. Rack and Benny joined in and they sang the song together. When they finished, Mr. Nezzer was smiling. Oh, that was beautiful, he said. I'm going to be singing that song myself. As I throw you into the furnace, God sees them. Take them to the furnace. Laura looked on in horror as the guards dragged her friends away. What could she do? Back in the factory, Mr. Nezzer put Rack, Shack, and Benny on the conveyor belt that led to the furnace. He asked them one more time. Will you or won't you sing the song? The boys thought hard. Then they explained to Mr. Neza that their parents had always taught them to stand up for what they believed in. They also told him that God wanted them to do what was right and that there was a lot of stuff in that song that was not right. That's why, even though they didn't want to get in trouble, they could not sing that song. Mr. Neza smiled. I understand, boys. He said. Benny was amazed. You do? Oh, yes. Mr. Neza continued. I understand that you're bad buddies. Mr. Neza pushed the button that sent Rack, Shack, and Benny down the slide towards the furnace. Round and round they went as the glow of the furnace grew brighter. Was this the end? Suddenly, they stopped falling. They hit something, but it wasn't the furnace. Mr. Nezzer turned to see what happened, and Laura's truck rose into the air with Rag, Shag, and Benny safely inside. Sorry, sir. Can't let you cook my body. She yelled. Guards, get them! Mr. Nezzer hollered. Two guards jumped into flying bunny cycles and raced off after Laura. Laura was a good driver. She led the guards into the giant pipes of the factory, twisting and turning as they raced along. One by one, she tricked the guards into going the wrong way, and they fell out of the pipe and into the giant vats of chocolate below. <laughs> Up ahead, they saw light streaming down the tunnel. That must be the way out. Laura followed the light and flew out of the pipe. But instead of being outside, they were right back where they started, above the furnace with Mr. Nezza smiling at them. You're back, he said. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that truck belongs to me, Mr. Lunt. Mr. Lunt pushed a button, and two giant arms grabbed Laura's truck and held it tight. Oh, but look. Nezza continued. My truck seems to be full of garbage. Mr. Lunt, is there anything you can do about that? Mr. Lunt pushed another button, and the arms began turning the truck over. He was going to dump them right into the furnace. While no one was looking, Laura jumped out of the truck and disappeared behind a pile of boxes. Rack, Shack, and Benny were now looking right down into the furnace. Shack turned to his friends with a worried look on his face. Remember how our parents said that God would always be watching out for us? He asked. I sure hope they were. Just then, the crane's arm shut down. Mr. Nezzo looked around and saw Laura standing on top of the boxes with the crane's power cord next to her and a crazy look in her eyes. I said, nobody bakes my buddy. She hollered. The boys smiled at their brave friend, but their smiles faded as the tail of the truck began bending under their weight. Listen here, young lady. Nezzo yelled. He was interrupted by a loud crack. 
the tailgate had broken, and Laura and Mr. Nezzle watched as Rack, Shack, and Benny disappeared into the glowing furnace. <laughs> Nobody's ever gonna stand up to me again. Mr. Nezzle laughed, but then something strange happened. Mm -hmm. A crackling noise filled the air. Mr. Nezzle spun around to see light streaming down into the furnace, filling the with an eerie glow. Mr. Lunt popped up to a window and looked inside. Hey, boss, he said. How many guys did we throw into the furnace? Mr. Nezzer was frightened. Uh, three? He mumbled. Well, it looks like four guys in there now, and one of them's real shiny, said Mr. Lunt. Mr. Nezzer was speechless. Mr. Lunt looked back into the furnace. One more thing, boss, he whispered. They ain't burning up. Now Mr. Nezzer realized that God was taking care of Rat Shack and Benny even in the fiery furnace. Quickly, he called the boys out. They hadn't gotten burned at all. Mr. Nezzer apologized for trying to make them do things that they weren't supposed to do. What was I thinking? He said. I must have forgot everything that my mommy taught me. Rat Shack and Benny remembered one more thing that their parents taught them. That God always wants us to forgive. We forgive you, they said. And that's the story of Rack, Shack, and Benny. Three boys who learned that if they stood up for what they believed in, God would stand with them.